So friends, uh, we have covered quite a number of things in this concept of interest. We did simple interest, we did compound interest, we did combined combination, combinations of simple and compound interest, we did effective rate of return and we also did depreciation which is just an offshoot of the concept of compound interest. Now we take up a very important topic that is annuity. Now, when you say annuity, it's something which all of us are actually aware of in some form or the other. So, it's basically derived from the word annual. Derived from the word annual. It involves a kind of a deposit that you make annually. It could be a deposit made annually. Now, we know very well that a very important concept of interest is that the value of money with time goes on decreasing as, it's, as a natural process. Hence, to compensate for that, we need to add the interest to that. So, what is 10,000 rupees now would not remain 10,000 after one year. Hence, to compensate for that, we multiply it by the corresponding interest rate to add up the interest to which you add the amount. Hence, the same principle is involved and hence, suppose you are making some deposit every year, a fixed amount of deposit every year, what would it amount to or what would it accrue to after say 5 years? So, what would it accrue to after 5 years? That's what we are going to learn in terms of annuity. Now, considering this process, what is your earning is going to be somebody else's expenditure much the same way if you are going to spend something is going to be somebody else's earning so the same principle can be applied even if you take a loan from someone and you need to repay it at a certain rate that you're doing and you need to hence what will be the amount that you'll end up paying that is also a part of annuity say suppose you are taking a loan of hundred thousand and you need to pay it in say 10 installments. Now you may think let me pay that will be the same as 10,000 plus 10,000 plus 10,000 spread over 10 years. But do you think it is going to compensate for this? Definitely not because we know the same 100,000 with every year the value of this 100,000 will increase. So if you just pay 10,000, 10,000 you are definitely paid the principal amount but you are not compensated for the loss in the value of this 100,000. In that case, we have to say if it is 10,000 now, what will be the value of it one year? What will be the value of it after two years? What will be the value of it after three years, four years, five years? The value is going to reduce. Hence, how do you compensate for that? And hence, we have the concept of whatever is the present value and the corresponding future value have to be taken into account. So, hence, if you are depositing 10,000, 10,000 every year, its present value will not be 100,000, it will be much less than this. And hence, if you need to deposit, if you need to repay 100,000, you have to pay more than 10,000 with every installment so that it amounts to 100,000. So, in all these, you have the concept of an annual payment made at the end of every year or in certain cases even at the paying in the beginning of a particular year so we say advanced annuity right but often to make things easy for us since most of us are earning people we earn and we calculate our income on a monthly basis the same annuity see, always remember the origin of a number of terms is based on how it was first felt the need to apply it. So, annual is derived from the word, annuity is derived from the word annual, but now a corresponding monthly concept has been involved and hence you can even pay monthly basis at the end of every month. Even that can be called a kind of an annuity. It's also an annuity, an equivalent amount of annuity. What you pay at the end of one year is equivalent to what at you, that you pay at the end of every month. That is also kind of an annuity. Hence, 
this is what is a basic idea of annuity which is basically a fixed amount of money that you pay at regular intervals it could be annually it started by payment annually but now we can make it even monthly you can make it as an equal monthly installment that you pay and what will be the equivalent value now and what will be the equivalent value after a few years now where and all we apply we apply it in terms of maybe your fixed deposit which you deposit certain amount of money at the end of every year after six years what will be the cumulative value suppose you deposit hundred thousand every year now at the end of five years you're not going to get just hundred thousand into five you're going to get hundred thousand what it will accrue as interest for a certain years then what will the next installment accrue and all these interests added up along with the principal will give the net amount that you're going to get which is going to be the amount or which is also called the future value of whatever installment that you made per year so that is one way of applying on the contrary suppose you have taken a loan now and there is certain amount that you're paying fixed amount that you're paying every year how much should you be paying every year so that the equivalent of all that in all these years is equivalent to the amount that you have paid the amount that you taken loan as say hundred thousand you're taken as loan as how much should you pay every year so that the present value of all those installments is actually 100,000. So these concepts, but ultimately annuity is about a certain amount of money, fixed amount of money that you're paying at regular intervals, either to gain a cumulative amount at the end of the period or to find an equivalent of whatever amount you have taken right now as of such. So now that's what basically is annuity. We shall take this up more in detail. So let's see what we have here. Now we're going to take up what is annuity, a good idea we had of what an annuity is. We'll go further into the details. Then we have the concept of advanced annuity. This what is generally most of the annuity that we do is we call it as annuity due, which means you pay the installment at the end of one year, right? But sometimes you may pay the first installment in the beginning say suppose you are planning to take a loan of 1 lakh so the first installment you pay on the day the loan has been sanctioned to you so you're paying in the beginning of the first period so in such a case that one will not accrue any interest accordingly what you will uh, what the what changes could be made but to study advanced annuity we should first understand what the annuity do, due is then we can understand how it is related to advanced annuity. Then we have the concept of perpetuity. Perpetuity is kind of a fixed amount of, it's also kind of an annuity, but it's a kind of a fixed amount of money that you get at a regular interval throughout your life. For example, if you're depositing 100,000 rupees and the bank is paying you an interest of 10% per annum. So how much can you get per year so you will at the end of the first year you'll end up getting an interest of say 10,000 so that you would take it you're still the principal amount left is 100,000 for the next year again you're going to get 10,000 rupees as interest so that 10,000 is a perpetual payment which you're going to get at the end of every year throughout your lifetime because your principal amount remains the same then you call it as a perpetuity then you have deferred annuity deferred annuity means at the end you normally pay an annuity at the end of the first year or at the end of the first month but there are certain cases as in case you need to buy uh, you need to buy a kind of an apartment or something so in such cases maybe you need uh, you want to wait for some time to pay the first uh, installment in that case you may defer it by four or five months so instead of paying at the end of first month you may pay start paying at the end of the sixth month so in that case so you're paying at the end of six months you start your emi payment at the end of six months instead of at the end of five uh, one month so in that case you deferred it deferred it by six minus one that is five months you have deferred it by five months that is as it is you are supposed to pay one month later 
but totally you're paying after six months means you have further taken it behind by five months and the institution which is paying you will compensate for it by increasing the net period of course so hence you're deferred it by five months right then you have the concept of sinking fund now sinking fund is a kind of a something like a provident fund which a company may provide or maybe even your housing society may have a kind of a sinking fund wherein uh, to make things easy in a soft way every month a certain amount is deposited with a purpose which would accrue into certain amount of money which can be used for some other purpose say a company wants to buy a particular machine say after 10 years whose value is predicted to be certain amount say its value right now is say 50,000 and it may the value would become 62,500 maybe after five years but at that time the company would not like to block that much amount of money so right from today the company starts depositing some fixed amount of money which would accumulate to 62,500 five years from now. So that means a company is setting up a sinking fund which, for, which is uh, provided for by making some equal annuity or equal monthly installment or equal annual installment at the end of every year and that would amount to 62,500. So it doesn't pinch the finance at the same time the required amount is being accumulated. So it's something like how you have a provident fund for certain employees who will be getting it like a pleasant surprise at the end of their tenure. So these are the topics that we are planning to cover up.